The IU football team caps off their non-conference season here at home while field hockey looks to kick off their Big Ten home schedule. And the women's soccer team look to pick up their first Big Ten win in nearly two years while the men look to stay undefeated. Coming up on Hoosier Sports Night. Welcome to Hoosier Sports Night, I'm David Sugarman. And I'm Juliana Sherry, and we're here in the Beckley studio in the newly renovated Franklin Hall, home to Indiana University's Media School. And David, we feel right at home in this beautiful new facility. Exactly, and a couple of Indiana teams that played well at home last season were the basketball teams. Both the men and women went undefeated at home, going combined 31-0 when they took the floor at Assembly Hall. And expectations are high once again as they both return the Big Ten Coaches of the Year, respectively, for the women, Terry Morin, and the men, Tom Crean. Now, Morin led the ladies to their first tournament appearance since 1982 and got them to the round of 32. Now, having only lost one player from last year's roster, Lindsay Lycombe, to graduation, the expectations are high for the ladies. Now, on the other hand, the men will sport a very different look this season. The boys graduated five seniors, including their all-time assist leader Yogi Ferrell, and saw Troy Williams leave a year early for the NBA draft. The retooled roster will feature eight new players as IU tries to repeat as Big Ten champs, going for their third Big Ten title since 2013. And David, that journey starts on November 11th in Hawaii against the Kansas Jayhawks. Throughout the non-conference, Indiana will get the chance to play some marquee opponents like Butler, Louisville, and a chance to avenge their Sweet 16 loss against UNC. The Hoosiers will then start the Big Ten schedule on December 28th here at home against Nebraska. Their Big Ten schedule showcases them on the Big Ten Network six times and on the ESPN family of networks a total of 14 times featuring Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Purdue. Now while there's a lot of preseason excitement surrounding the basketball team, there's lots of reasons to be excited about the football team's hot start, Juliana. Yeah, you know, the football team's off to a great start in their first two weeks going undefeated 2-0 and and got the chance to rest up in their bye week last weekend. Yeah, perfect in the win-loss column, but not so much on the field. After going up 30 to nothing in the home opener against Ball State, Indiana gave up 20 unanswered points in the second half. The defense disappearing act went hand-in-hand -hand with the fans disappearing act, well, at least if you ask Coach Wilson. Our football reporter Drew Martin caught up with Coach Wilson to get some of the answers that he's looking for headed into the Wake Forest matchup. I'm here outside of Memorial Stadium where IU will play host to the Wake Forest Demon Deacons on Saturday. The Hoosiers are coming off of a bye week and one may assume that they may lose some of the momentum that they gained early on in the season. Coach Wilson addressed the media after the Ball State game and explains how the team plans to keep their early season success. A lot of teams come out of open date, play poorly. And we're doing a different open date schedule than normal this year because it's an early open date. And because of that fact of, you know, you come, you know, you don't play on Saturday. We're not going to play a game next Saturday, but we're going to come out and run around, kind of play a little football Saturday, kind of keep our kids in the football mode, keep that schedule moving. It was here at the Hinky Hall of Champions where Coach Wilson addressed the media on Monday. He talked about the loss of several key players, including offensive lineman Dan Feeney and wide receiver Simi Cobbs Jr. And we're going to have bumps and bruises. We have injuries. We'll overcome that the best we can. We're going to keep playing. But I think our team has bought in to the new strength coach, the new defensive staff, and what's going on and the way we're trying to play as a team. And we're not great yet, but we're trying to become a stronger and better team each week. Coach Wilson also had some strong comments about fans leaving early in the fourth quarter of the game against Ball State. we got good fans. Those tailgates are still there. You, you, if you buy in a good enough cooler, the stuff will stay cold for you. Let's ride out the second half, man. Let's play ball. I mean, we're just, they're good, they're good kids. I mean, I'm not complaining about them, but, you know, I mean, you know, the, the great thing about the home crowd is the energy of the fans. And just, you, you love to have second half energy. And same time, the football team's got to create it on. The fans aren't going to cheer if you don't make plays. We just bumped into Coach Wilson outside the stadium, and he wants to clarify that he was not trying to slight the fans in any way by these comments, but rather he wants to keep the stadium loud and rocking all the way until the end of the game. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Drew Martin. Kickoff is this Saturday at Memorial Stadium at 3.30. Yeah, and David, while Indiana may have had a bye week last weekend, many Big Ten teams were still in action. Our very own football reporter Brandon Pavlina recaps the weekend that was. 
With the Hoosiers on a bye this past weekend, we take a quick look back at how some of Indiana's upcoming Big Ten opponents fared in their matchups. Michigan State able to get the victory on the road against Notre Dame. The 73-yard touchdown run here by Gerald Holmes. The Spartans racked up over 250 yards on the ground and gave Deshaun Kaiser fits all night. Irish rallied late, but MSU prevailed 36-28. Ohio State getting the job done on the road. Baker Mayfield gets his pass tipped and intercepted by Jerome Baker for the Buckeyes. OSU would pick off Mayfield twice in this one. Play of the weekend, maybe even of the year, came in this game, however, and it's this play right here from JT Barrett to Noah Brown off the back of the defender. And here's another look. Brown finished with 72 yards and four touchdowns, tying an Ohio State record. Up next, it's Nebraska hosting Oregon, and the Ducks would take the lead into the fourth, but the same score under three minutes to go. Nebraska quarterback Tommy Armstrong Jr. puts the team on his back, though. Armstrong finished the game with 200 yards and three touchdowns through the air to go along with 95 yards and that late touchdown on the ground. Huskers able to hold on late. Northwestern able to get off the schneid at home against Duke. Quarterback Clayton Thorson completes the pass over the middle to Austin Carr for a 58-yard touchdown to seal the victory. Thorson finished with 320 yards passing, three touchdowns, and two picks. Michigan hosted Colorado in the big house. Colorado on top late, but Davion Smith takes the sweep outside and up the field for a 42-yard touchdown to put the Wolverines back on top for good. Later on in the fourth, here's the versatile and electrifying Jabril Peppers who's going to field the punt and knife his way through a herd of Buffalo for a touchdown. Peppers finished the game with nine tackles, three and a half for a loss, and a sack to go along with the punt return touchdown. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Brandon Pavlina. Many of the teams that Indiana will be playing this season open up their Big Ten schedules this upcoming weekend, including number eight Michigan State, their next opponent after Wake Forest, who will be taking on number 11 Wisconsin. IU Volleyball hosted the Hoosier Classic this past weekend. Now, after falling to Arkansas State in the opening match, three sets to one, they beat IUPUI and Cleveland State in straight sets. Indiana took down Northwestern three sets to one on Wednesday night. With the win against Northwestern, the Hoosiers have now won five out of their last seven matches as they head into a difficult stretch of their schedule. Three out of their next five matches are against the top three teams in the nation. The IU field hockey team traveled to the East Coast last weekend to face off against two of the top 20 teams in the nation. The Hoosiers started with Maryland on Saturday, dropping their Big Ten opener to the number seven ranked Terrapins, four to one. Captain Kate Barber extended her scoring streak to six games with the Hoosiers' only goal on the day. Maryland's fifth-year senior forward, Welma Lewis, led the Terrapins with eight shots, two on goal, and one in the back of the net. The Hoosiers stuck it out on Sunday in the East Coast for a first match in program history against the 12th-ranked Delaware Blue Hens. With Delaware leading 4-0, Indiana mounted a comeback but fell short by one goal when time expired. Kate Barber scored twice, bringing her weekend total to three goals, and sophomore Noel Ruta tallied six saves in the Hoosiers' near comeback. The Hoosiers finished the weekend 0-2, but the record still stands at 4-4. They'll take on Rutgers in their Big Ten home opener this Friday before heading to Mount Pleasant on Sunday to take on the Chippewas of Central Michigan. Now, the Big Ten schedule hasn't exactly been kind to the women's soccer team over the past two seasons. But this past weekend, the ladies put one in the win column in conference play for the first time in nearly two years. Michaela Brown scored the lone goal in the Hoosiers match at Illinois that took a few extra minutes to settle. This was their second overtime match of the season after playing Louisville to a draw earlier this year. The men have managed to stay undefeated so far this season. They played Northwestern to a draw on Sunday and took down IPUI 2-0 this past Tuesday. The match against IPUI was highlighted by goals from Richard Ballard and Tanner Thompson, who have combined for seven goals through the first eight games this season. The boys take to the road next when they swing over to the East Coast to take on Rutgers this Friday. David, we heard Coach Wilson say, get out to the games. For this upcoming weekend, there's going to be a little bit more than just football to get out to. Here's a look at some of those games that you can check out to start racking up your Crimson Guard reward points. Thank you. 
Don't forget to like our page, IUS TV Sports, on Facebook, as well as following us on Twitter at IUS TV Sports. For IUS TV Sports, Juliana Sherry, I'm David Sugarman. We'll see you next week.